Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I am going to be talking about and doing some tutorials using the brand new Viseart Grand Pro Volume 3 palette. So if you are interested in hearing my thoughts on this palette, then just keep watching. So I'm going to spend the first half of this video kind of giving my review and thoughts on this palette and then the second half I will put a timestamp down below if you are just interested in seeing the tutorials. Also the sun is out and this keeps happening and it's really annoying me so I'm sorry if it annoys you as well. So I just wanted to take a moment to, for the Muse Beauty Bro team for sending this palette out to me. I am an affiliate for them but if they weren't going to send it to me I was going to purchase this anyways. I'm genuinely excited about this palette and Muse beauty is literally where I go to buy all of my busy art products. I think you guys know that by now, but they're a great team anyways, so you should definitely check out their website. So let's talk about the facts of this palette. Like I said, it is available on the Muse Beauty Pro website. They worked with busy art for this palette. If you don't know, I use busy art all the time. They are the brand that I use in my makeup kit. I own so many of their palettes, so I am very familiar with their formula. And so when I saw they were coming out with this, obviously it was a no brainer for me to pick up. This is a hundred and seventy five dollars and it is a eyeshadow palette of 30 vibrant matte hues. It was created through the laws of color theory and it's ideal for creating avant-garde and editorial looks if I mean you couldn't already tell. So <laughs> I also did get a fact sheet so I did want to relay some information to you that you might be curious about. This palette is limited edition. Now I will say I do believe the volume one was supposed to be limited edition but it was just such a hit that it's in their line now. I mean, just given the colors of this, I really think this might actually be limited edition. So if you do want to pick it up, I would recommend you pick it up now. And these are all new shades that were created exclusively for this palette. So if you're like me and you own a lot of her other palettes, all of these shades are brand new. I will say when I was like kind of swatching and comparing to my other palettes, there are definitely some similar colors, but when you're creating such a range of colors, there are bound to be some similar colors. But they were all new. It's not like a palette of colors that already existed that they put into an empty palette. Another thing, these pressed pigments is quite a hot topic here in the makeup community because a lot of them are deemed not eye safe. So it says here that this palette is made with the finest pigments and is European Union compliant for use in eye makeup. So there is no warning saying that not any of these shades are unsafe for the eyes. So that itself I think is going to make a lot of you guys very happy because there are so many palettes nowadays that are not eye safe. This one is. So that's awesome, especially for it having such a range of colors. So obviously this is volume three, meaning there are two other volumes that came out before it. The volume one in particular is what my most used eyeshadow palette, to be quite honest. This will not be my most used, just given the color story here, but I just love one and two so much that I knew I had to have this. So let's go ahead and talk about the packaging of this guy really quickly. It's the same packaging as volume one and two. It's kind of like a pleather material. This is a professional palette, so it's not crazy as far as the packaging goes. It's functional, which is the most important part. So you open it up and you are able to kind of stand it like an easel. It has a mirror. And then of course, this plastic sheet that does protect the eyeshadows, you can rip it off if you want, but I like to keep it there to protect the eyeshadows. Of course, the great thing about Busy Art Shadows is that you can remove the pans and put them in other palettes or rearrange it to your liking, whatever you want to do with it. You can use your finger, but I'm always scared of kind of digging in on accident, so I will take something thin and just kind of stick it out and pull it out. So the shadows are very easily interchangeable. So let's go on and talk about the color story of this guy. Now this to me is a rainbow palette. I don't want to slam ABH because I do kind of like their new big eyeshadow palettes. I really liked the Norvina volume one. I have the other two on the way. I don't physically have them in my hands, but I hated the layout of them. I want to take the eyeshadows out and rearrange them. And I love my shadows arranged monochromatically and just gradient wise and I mean, this is how a colorful palette should be done. It makes it much easier for the user. And to me, I feel more inspired. Whereas with the ABH, I felt a little bit of anxiety from it. So the fact that this is arranged like this alone is amazing. Now, I don't wanna go on too much of a tangent about color theory. You can look it up yourself if you want to learn or there's a lot of great other videos on it. I'm not a color theory expert. I 
do have a little bit more education in it just from going to makeup school and all of that so I am familiar with it and I naturally kind of follow color theory in my looks without really thinking about it but there's a color wheel. The more you stick with colors that are next to each other, the less muddy it's going to be. The more you go towards opposite colors, the more muddy your look is going to be. So essentially, you kind of want to stay away from colors that are not alike at all. You want to keep it as a gradient into your eyes so that they don't get muddy and patch. And just the layout itself of this is going to help you if you are not really comfortable with color theory because this is arranged in such a way that you can place these colors next to each other and most likely it will be okay. Like using yellows to oranges to reds is going to create a seamless blend and then blue to green is going to create again a seamless blend. I don't want to go too much into that. Just know that the way this is laid out it is much more user-friendly and you are less likely to get a patchy mess. But before you use this palette, I would recommend that you spend a little bit of time learning about color theory. Also, it is arranged, it kind of goes from light to dark here too. So you have your depth shades and you have some great base shades here. So I just, everything about the way this palette is laid out, it's just perfection to me. Obviously, the only color missing in here, I would say, is purple, but I think she has something up her sleeves as far as purple goes. That's what I saw in a comment. So hopefully, because I'm a big purple freak. So that's the only color kind I'm missing in the rainbow here. This is all matte and I know for myself I like a lot of dimension and texture to my look so I definitely will be using this paired with other palettes rather than alone. For this video two looks that I did were just using this for the sake of the video and then I did one where I did grab a shimmer because I couldn't help myself. I just know personally for me this is a great palette that I will go to when I need a certain color because this has so many different kind of colors. So this leads me to my next point that if you have this palette in my humble opinion you need to pair it with the Grand Pro Volume 2. This is an all shimmer palette and this palette, I do have a video on it so I will link that down below if you want to kind of get more familiar with that palette. But these two palettes are a match made in heaven. So with these two palettes, you can create some really stunning avant-garde kind of looks. I'm not gonna tell you to order both, but like these two are amazing. I always felt like with the Grand Pro Volume 1 and the Volume 2, like yeah, they worked, but I wouldn't find myself pairing them together too often. I just, these two are made for each other. Definitely pick both up if you're interested. And just so you can kind of see a quick comparison between the one and three, totally different. And really quickly, I don't want to talk about this too much, but as far as the quality goes, I had no issues with this palette. I will say it is a little bit more colorful, so colored pressed pigments are a little bit more difficult to work with. Some of the looks, that blue look in particular that I created, it was a little bit of extra effort to use and to blend, but it still is a really great palette. Had no issues. Some shades have a little bit more fallout than others. I would recommend doing your eyes first or tapping off. I tend to use a really light hand, so I just tap off my brush and you will get a lot more vibrance in the colors if you kind of pack them on instead of just applying them straight through blending. These shades are buildable but you can actually get a pretty sheer wash of color with them so they aren't super duper packed with pigment I would say because I have worked with pressed pigments that had so much pigmentation. These don't. These are workable. You can build them but you can also have a lighter wash or blend with them which I personally really like. I know some people may not like that because if you're buying a colorful palette you may want that full vibrancy right away. Some shades definitely do have a little bit more vibrancy see right away than others but overall I think it's a really good piece to have in my personal collection I don't see myself using it a ton just because of the colors but I am glad I have it and when I want to create certain looks there are such unique colors in here that I see myself grabbing for it a lot so if you see yourself using these colors a lot I think you will really enjoy this palette I do do makeup professionally but I don't make my living off of makeup like I have a nine to five job I just do bridal and event makeup on the weekends so for that I mean this I won't be using that I won't be putting it in my kit I use my volume one in my makeup kit like obviously this is much more suited towards brides but definitely if you are a professional and you have a need for these colors this is amazing to have in your kit Viseart being a professional brand they needed to come out with a palette like this 30 shades of any color that you would need last kind of point I wanted to make before I got into the tutorials just kind of comparing it to the editorial brights palette this 
formula is pretty similar. If not, I think the volume three formula is a little bit more easy to work with, but very similar. There are a couple shades in here that I feel like are very, very close, but then there's a lot of shades in here that are very, very different. I would say the Editorial Brights is a miniature version of this larger palette. This one, I would say, has a little bit more of like the neon super bright and vibrant shades, whereas this one just, it does have shades that aren't quite as vibrant, but there are 30 in here and there are not 30 in here. Definitely some similar colors between the two. If you don't use color too much and this is what you bought to have color in your collection, I think you're fine here. You do need this range of colors. I mean, go for it. It's a really nice palette. So now it's time for my tutorials. I hope you guys enjoy them and I hope this gives you a little bit of inspiration. This palette definitely inspired me and sent me out of my comfort zone and you will see that. So as a base right now I have on a little bit of MAC painterly paint pot but over top I'm gonna put the Vizzy Art eyeshadow primer on there. We're gonna go in with kind of a monochromatic look. I'm gonna change how I did this because I feel like it's gonna help with patchiness and just make things a lot easier. I just had, this eye always turns out better. <laughs> so the first color that we're starting off with is this pastel-y green right here. I'm just using this like random e.l.f. eyeshadow brush. So this is just kind of going to work as the base color and just kind of blend it. I'm not being too careful about the placement. This eye is a little bit more artistic than I would normally do. So I'm applying the color in places you would not normally for every day. <laughs> taking my refer brush, I'm taking this brighter green shade right here. And we're just going to kind of start the gradient. Be mindful of the blend up here. I have a bit of dry skin for some reason, so it looks a little bit patchy here, uh, but that's my skin, not the eyeshadow. But just be mindful that you still want the top to be blended as well. So as we go, this refer brush, and I'm just going to detail this part right here and blend it to a very soft color. The next shade I will be taking is going to kind of play more into the blues on my eye. I'm going to be taking this color right here, a really deep teal shade. And this is the Isom G27, one of my favorite eyeshadow brushes. And we're going to work this into that gradient. Now, this is when we're getting into the more dark shades. So just use a very soft hand. Take your time because colors can be difficult to work with. So this eye is already turning out way better than my other eye. And again, be mindful up here for this blend. We're going to transition into a blue blue color. This is almost like a periwinkle blue. And this is the Esam S33. And we're going to build this into this true blue color. Now, as you can see, the undertones of these two colors are very different. So you really kind of want to work them together so that they work a little bit better together. To continue to deepen, we're gonna take this shade up here I'm using the same brush and we're gonna work on this outer corner. Okay, and very important, take your brush and blend. Because I can't help myself and I wanna add some depth, we're gonna take this color right here. This is another refer brush. And we're gonna kind of work that out here. Okay, so I'm gonna touch up the blending and everything and I'll be right back. So this kind of more unblended area up here was driving me insane. So what I am doing is I'm taking some of this pastel -y yellow. This is on my small refer blending brush and I'm literally using this white shade to work as both my under eyebrow highlight and also to diffuse out those edges. Do you see what an amazing job it did out here? Obviously the color's a little bit higher than I had originally anticipated, but we're going full artsy here. So that's just a little tip. If you play with those blues, this really did help diffuse these edges out. I'm gonna go back to working. <laughs> okay, so it is time to work on the lower lash line. I just continued with all of the colors that were already on my eye. So I'm starting off with the pastel kind of green and I'm literally running that everywhere. I want this to work as the base color. So I'm bringing it lower than I would normally bring these types of shadows but I want the darker shades to blend out to this green. Also try and bring it up here to kind of 
blend out that outer corner as well do you see how that just really diffused everything next i'm using the morphe m562 and i'm taking this color and i'm just going to kind of put that right on top we're going to take this brighter blue color right here this is the morphe m507 and then i'm finally finishing off with this shade right here and this is a mac 219 brush tap off your brush with this color cool so i'm gonna put on some lashes and do some final touch-ups and i'll be right back okay so obviously i would say this look is definitely not a style i am very comfortable with but you know what this palette really did have me step out of my comfort zone i wouldn't say that these colors were the most easiest shadows to work with in the world but i was playing with these really rich deep blues and greens so i'm not really <laughs> surprised by that but it did work well i know this is not kind of my typical look so i'm gonna take this off and we're gonna do a look that's a little bit more my style but yeah dang this palette makes me you do crazy things so the last look we got a little uh, crazy with. So uh, for this look, I kind of wanted to stick to a look that's more me using more colors that I'm comfortable with. And obviously I have a shimmery color on my lid. I will talk about that in a second. So for my transition crease shade, I'm taking this color right here. This is one of the more neutral colors in this palette. And we're going to start off with this all over the crease like so. Pretty sheer color. This color doesn't come off quite as pigmented as I would have hoped, but it's still like... A nice sheer base coat so I'm not mad at that so we're gonna start into digging into a little bit more fun colors so I'm taking this kind of bright cognac color it's not quite orange but uh, it pulls as you can see very bright on the eyelids I wouldn't say it's super rich in pigmentation but it's workable for sure which I really like I find that to be a little bit more user-friendly I'm just doing a typical look I would kind of do that I'd feel comfortable wearing out so let's build on some of that brightness a little bit so i'm taking this bright orange shade right here i'm just taking it on the side of a blending brush and i'm using that all over my lid now the reason i'm using a blending brush is so that it kind of diffuses the pigmentation a little bit because if you were to use like a shader or packer brush you would get more pigmentation but just because these bristles are very loose you're just putting a wash all over the lid and that's a way you can kind of get away with using this palette as more of an everyday palette is if you just do a wash of like one or two of the colors but anyways i feel like if you're getting this palette it, like you're not going for anything wearable so <laughs> there's also that but this alone i mean is such a pretty fall look so here's another look right here some liner and lashes, and you're perfect for the fall. So I went in with this brighter red shade right here. It's like an orange red. And I'm putting this in the outer corner. So as you can see instantly, that's adding some brightness. So one thing I'm noticing from the shades in this kind of color family, they aren't extremely pigmented. I don't have a sticky base on, and I am using wiping motions. Now, if you were to use more padding motions, you would definitely get a little bit more pigmentation out of this palette. But right now, I'm I'm kind of for this particular look i'm focusing more on actually maybe wearing this out in public whereas that last look it was a lot about packing pressing and blending a little bit this look is just about a really simple diffused look so that's all the colors that i'm using from the grande pro 3 as you can see they worked really well because i kind of stayed within the same family they all blended beautifully it's a very cohesive non-patchy look the other look took a little bit of extra work so let's talk about how well this pairs with the grand or grande pro 3 palette these palettes are a match made in heaven and honestly i don't see myself using the matte palette all alone very often because i'm a shimmer girl i like a lot of texture and dimension on the lid so i wanted to pick a color from here so i'm going to take this color right here and my brush is already damp by the way with the Esum pro mixing medium kind of almost created a paste anyways i just added this to add a little bit of more dimension to the lid because the all matte was kind of killing me so i'm gonna finish the rest of my face on my lower lash line i'm just gonna kind of put the orange everywhere 
and I'll be right back for the final look. So here is the second look I did. It is the all orange look. I did take a little bit of the brightest yellow in this palette to kind of blend out the edges to make it a little bit more smoky and a little bit more crazy because I just feel like with this palette, how can you not create a crazy look? This is this look, really simple. It was really easy to do and I really, really like it. So let's move on to the final tutorial. So I wanted to do like a super simple one eyeshadow look. I feel like this is a kind of fun and playful wearable way to wear color. Like, okay, I probably wouldn't wear this in daytime, but like, I don't know, a night out with like the appropriate lashes and stuff. So it's super simple. So the only shade that I used is this one right here. So this is a MAC 217. I like it because it's a blender brush and kind of a packer brush in one. So I'm just gonna tap off my brush so I don't get anything on my face. And all you do is you just pat it onto the lid. And then I start using the blender side to kind of work it up. So you are going to need to layer this color a little bit, but as you can see, it is working very easily. You don't have to go quite as blown out as I did, but couldn't help myself. So I just wanted to show this because it is so simple to do. And it is a way to kind of play around with color for people who might feel intimidated. You can literally do a look with just one color and it can be any color using this technique. And I also kind of whatever's left over on my brush, I'm working it along the lower lash line. I'm just trying to get some product off of my brush so that I can really work on softening these edges. I'm gonna get a little bit more product and put that down here. Literally, this is it. This is all you have to do. As you can see, it was very simple. So I'm going to put on lashes and that's gonna kind of make it look not as crazy and I'll be right back. All right, so that is all I have for today's video. I just wanted to stop by and say a quick thank you for watching this video. I'm very passionate about Viseart and I give them my full support and I hope you would as well. It's a great company. Let me know your thoughts down below about this palette and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys, have a good one.